Music and meteorology sounds like an unlikely pairing, but for one Kansas City TV meteorologist now playing in St. Joseph's Symphony, bringing the thunder takes on a whole new meaning. K2 senior anchor David Bowden sits down with former colleague Brian Busby as he prepares for his downtown debut. It will. And here's a good line of showers and thunderstorms popping up. If you've been to Kansas City in the last few decades, you've probably seen Brian Busby on KMBC 9 News tracking the latest thunderstorms. So that's why I can't wear green. I got to wear a different color or else. OK, well, let's point. But now you can find Brian bringing the thunder at the Missouri Theater with the St. Joseph Symphony. I'd say this brings me more joy because of the simple reason one's my vocation, one's my avocation. I studied it in both, but it's so much nicer to be surrounded by friends who are making music as opposed to news which is separate and sports which is separate and weather which is separate. And the only time we're together is at the ending where we say goodnight. So we're all in our own little world, whereas this, we're all sharing the same world. Brian has performed with the Kansas City Civic Orchestra as well. He says it's a lifelong passion. If I hadn't gone to meteorology, I was going to go into music. So for this to be the professional orchestra of the St. Joseph area, it's kind of cool to be part of it. Bringing beautiful and Brahms to the city of St. Joseph. I want the folks to know that classical music doesn't have to be stuffy or stodgy. It's for everybody. And for me to be part of this season is going to be fun. You can see Brian tomorrow night, along with the rest of these incredible musicians, starting at 7 o'clock. We're in downtown St. Joseph tonight. I'm David Bowden, KQ2 News. And KQ2's Chief Meteorologist Mike Brasiano is in our Weather Center with details today. It rained a little bit and I'm hoping it's going away. Missouri Western's got family day tomorrow. Yeah, I think it's going to be fine for uh, the day tomorrow. There might start off with a little bit of some fog around the area. So be aware of that, especially as we head towards the early morning hours. We got some much needed rain here across northeast Kansas and northwest Missouri as a line of showers and even a few rumbles of thunder move through. All right, outside we go. Let's uh, show you what we have. And right now we do have just a few clouds still left uh, from that disturbance making its way from west to east. Temperature wise right now it's at 56, but you can see already that uh, dew points way up there at 56 degrees. So fog, pretty good bet as we go through tomorrow morning. A nice warm up that we have on tap as we go through your weekend. Talk about that in just a few minutes. Jackie. Thank you, Mike. HPI Products has been ordered to wind down on Monday. The U.S. District Court for the Western District of Missouri ordered the wind down, wind down and liquidation of HPI Products. In a news release from the City of St. Joseph, the company is to cease all further business operations. The order responds to the EPA and Missouri Department of Natural Resources temporary re receivership to address environmental violations. The court, appear, the court orders HPI to wind down by November 18th. A temporary receiver will, rece will remove hazardous waste from HPI and coordinate with impacted entities to begin cleanup, according to the news release. Missouri Governor Mike Parson signed a proclamation declaring next week as Clean Energy Week in the Show Me State. In a news release, Parson notes the clean energy industry's growth and employment of more than 51,000 Missourians. The week-long celebration of clean energy innovation and industries will highlight the economic opportunities that are possible from various types of clean energy. A victim of the fire that happened on 8th Street on Wednesday is getting help from some co-workers and a GoFundMe after being displaced. We talked to one of those co-workers today. A new resident to St. Joseph lost almost everything in a fire on Wednesday at an apartment building on North 8th Street. He just moved here roughly two months ago, two, three months ago to get um, a higher income because he was over in Kansas. And so he works down at the Taco Bell and then he started a second job here because he wanted to go to the Bahamas. That was his dream, so he started saving money. He's displaced after the fire and trying to get back on his feet with some help from his co-workers at Gino's Pizza downtown. We called a bunch of our friends and some of our, our customers stepped in. People have brought by clothes and different housing items and money for him. Um, some of our employees were able to bring some clothes for him the day of. He came in yesterday afternoon with a black trash bag and that was all that he had left from his apartment. Palmer works at Gino's with his parents who are the owners. 
and he says all the employees chipped in to help and Palmer started a GoFundMe. He just needs it all, so if anybody has anything or any extra money that they want to donate to him, he'd, he'd really benefit from it. The fire is still under investigation, and it's not clear yet exactly how many people lived in the building, but there were 36 apartments. So the American Red Cross and United Way were prepared to support the victims. I know our teams were, uh, we had teams on site the night of the fire. Uh, then we had uh, volunteers uh, staged at the Red Cross building there in St. Joe. Both organizations are working on getting supplies, donations, and more resources for all the residents that were displaced by the fire. So we're all staying in communication to make sure we're sharing those hygiene packs snack items, foods, getting food pantry boxes to easy locations if someone needs it. And hopefully with enough money raised, Gabriel's co-worker will be able to get a new place to live and maybe a trip to the Bahamas as well. It was pretty traumatizing for him. He was inside whenever the fire struck. He's a super sweet kid and he's just trying to just trying to get it all together and figure out you know where he wants to be and, and it was really sad that he had to endure that and we're hoping that he can, he can make it through in a good amount of time. If you want to donate to the GoFundMe, we will have a link to it in this article on our website, and you can also find it on the Geno's Pizza Facebook page. Missouri Western State University is inviting the public to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month with food, music, and salsa dancing at their annual Hispanic Heritage Banquet. According to a news release, the banquet will feature live music from Alexis Urai, who has performed on stages of The Voice and American Idol. The banquet will also feature remarks from Mosaic Life Care's Dr. Federic Federico Rivas Gotts and St. Joseph School District Board of Education's Isara Garcia. The event will be next Wednesday at 6 p.m. in the Fulkerson Center. Admission is free, but pre-registration is required. You can find the link to register in the story on our website at kq2.com. Missouri Western is also inviting students and families to Family Day tomorrow. Highlights include a reception for first-generation students, story hour for students with children, a Family Day tailgate followed by Griffin football against Washburn with kickoff starting at 6. Still ahead on KG2 News at 10, two big storms are set to take aim at the Florida coast as Hurricane Fiona is expected to hit Canada. And later, rain in our area causing the Friends of the Animal Shelter to cancel the Putten for Paws mini golf tournament. And now we're going to have to deal with some fog tomorrow morning. We'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. First, let's take a look at that almanac. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
Now to the tropics and tracking two big storms, Tropical Depression 9 or Nine forming in, Caribbe in the Caribbean, taking aim at the Florida coast. All of this as Hurricane Fiona batters Bermuda and set to strike a historic blow on Canada. ABC's Morgan Norwood has more. Bermuda bearing the brunt of Hurricane Fiona, the storm scraping the British territory and lashing the island with heavy winds and torrential downpours. ABC's Rob Marciano in the thick of it. Boats are becoming unmoored left and right. Here's another one. There's a couple of boats that flat out sank over there. We're in the teeth of Fiona now. Crews now scrambling to restore power to hundreds of thousands. At one point, about 70% of the island in the dark. A similar story in Puerto Rico where Fiona left a trail of devastation. Hundreds of power outages as the storm mangled the state's already fragile power grid. Fiona now headed north, taking aim at Canada in what's set to be a historic landfall. This storm is going to hit us, folks. It's going to hit us in the face. And so we have to be ready. And as it makes its way, Fiona kicking up surf and firing off rip currents along the east coast. Never want the storms to actually hit the coast. We just want them off the coast to generate the waves. And while Fiona isn't expected to hit the U.S. mainland, a new storm is. Hurricane hunters flying through Tropical Depression 9 as that system forecasted to strengthen and potentially threaten Florida. Residents there are already starting to prepare, some filling sandbags and fueling up, others flocking to grocery stores. Much of Florida now under a state of emergency. There is no time like now to prepare because I've seen in my experience over 30 years what storms can do. Wilma hit us hard in West Palm and it was a scary thing. The approaching system could also further delay the launch of NASA's new moon rocket for the historic Artemis 1 mission. Officials are closely monitoring the weather and will decide if they'll roll the rocket back to the hangar by Saturday afternoon. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. Your KQ2 Local Weather Authority forecast with Chief Meteorologist Mike Brasiano. Well, Mike, I think we're fortunate that we're not seeing hurricane conditions because we are in landlocked Missouri. But right. what are we going to see, though, over the weekend? Well, I tell you what, uh, I think the biggest concern for us is going to be the fog tomorrow morning. And then temperatures are going to warm back up into the 80s before another strong cold front moves through as we head towards uh, your Sunday, but th there's a couple of storms. We were just talking about Fiona, which is going to be affecting much of the uh, east, northeastern, way northeastern part of the United States. And then another disturbance that they're going to be watching very closely uh, that's now down towards uh, Cuba, down in the Caribbean. And that will have an effect, I think could have an effect if it gets into the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, on Florida. So that's something that we'll have to really kind of keep a very close watch on. 64 the high today, 52 the low. Officially out at Rosecrans, it was 66 hundredths of an inch of precipitation. 78 the normal high, 52 the normal low. 92 that record high back in 2017 and 31 the record low in 2012. Outside uh, right now, you can see there's a lot of moisture out there. The actual air temperature is 56, a dew point of 56, humidity is 100%. Winds are out of the southeast at 6 miles an hour and the pressure is on the rise. Uh, so far as what we've got going on with temperatures today, look at that. Phoenix at 101, it was 97 for a high in Dallas, 96 in Houston. Uh, but you get up to the northeast, that's where some of that cooler air is. And Boston only at 61 for a high. Look at Minneapolis, 57. So we know that cold air is out there. Uh, we just got a little bit of a taste of it with 64 for us, but Denver out at uh, 82 degrees. I think temperatures tomorrow will warm up into the 80s for us, but then we'll start to see some of that cooler air make its way down towards us. Right now, temperatures are in the 50s, 52 Kirksville, it's 59 in St. Louis, 65 in Cape Girardeau, but still pretty warm down to the south. Joplin at 79 degrees, 70 in Wichita. So for us tomorrow again with the fog in the morning, it's going to take a little while for us to warm up. 55 Wathena, 55 in Troy, Avenue City as well. Clarksdale's at 55, Cameron's at 54 right now, 58 in Fairfax, 57 Quitman. 55 in Maryville, and right now it's 53 in Bethany. So besides the fog tomorrow, the winds are going to be out of the south, and that's going to allow our temperatures to warm up 
into the lower 80s. Notice how we'll be under mostly clear skies uh, for the uh, afternoon and in through your evening. The one little batch of showers that moved through our area is now into the Ohio Valley, and that continues to move off to the east. Another area of precipitation up to the north, up and through portions of Minnesota. Again, that's moving away too. So once this has moved by, we're going to start to look at dry conditions as we go through next week and in, uh, into next weekend too. So good thing that we did get some of that much needed moisture here. Still with the clouds and again, watch out for that fog as we go towards tomorrow morning. There goes that disturbance. There's our fog in the morning. It quickly burns off. Here comes the next front that'll move through on Sunday. And all that will do is move our temperatures down just a little bit into the 70s. That moves by then. Look what we have for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Not much of anything. Beautiful weather coming our way. 52 tonight, tomorrow fog in the morning, and then 82 by the afternoon. Here's that extended forecast. Sunday 75, Monday 72, Tuesday 73. Notice we start to warm back up a little bit as we get into Thursday and Friday. Overnight lows generally in the 40s. So got that much needed rain uh, for us. Now it looks like it's going to be dry for a while. All right. Well, thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. the, rain, the rain this morning caused the Friends of the Animal Shelter to cancel their Putten for Paws golf tournament. The event was planned to benefit St. Joseph Animal Control and Rescue. There are no plans for rescheduling at the moment. If you reserved a spot for the golf tournament, reimbursement will be sent according to the Friends of the Animal Shelter's Facebook page. It's a busy night of high school football across the area, and the Kansas City Chiefs prepare for the Colts. Hear from Andy Reid next in sports. Mic check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten.
It will be 10 days between games for the Kansas City Chiefs between the time they played last week and now on Sunday. Heading into week three, sitting at 2-0 on the young season, the Chiefs coming off a win against the Los Angeles Chargers last Thursday and head over to Indianapolis to play the Colts on Sunday. The Chiefs coming in with quite a bit of confidence, especially with the way their defense played in the second half against the Chargers. Plus, the Colts starting 0-1-1 and off to an abysmal start for them considering they lost 24-0 to Jacksonville last week. But head coach Andy Reid saying again this week that records don't matter in the NFL and any team can beat any team. One advantage we had, I guess, was that we had a chance to watch everybody play in, uh, in this league right now. If, they, if you didn't know it before, <laughs> in this league there's so much parity and it doesn't matter what Sunday it is or what the record, I mean, it doesn't matter. So you have to prep hard and, and do your best. And so... Um, you know, that's, what, that's what I expect our guys to do. Uh, anything less and you put yourself in jeopardy of not winning the football game. So that's how, that's how this league is. The Chiefs and the Colts both dealing with injuries ahead of Sunday's game. Harrison Bucker for the Chiefs out with an ankle injury again this week. Mike Dana now out for the Chiefs with a calf injury. For the Colts, they'll be without linebacker Shaquille Leonard. He's out with a back injury. And it's the Chiefs and Colts on Sunday out in Indianapolis. Kansas City comes into this one 2-0 on the year. The Colts come in struggling at 0-1-1 and a 24-0 loss to the Jaguars last week. And coming up on football tonight, North Kansas City has central highlights from that game, as well as Savannah at Benton. Savannah trying to move to 5-0. Cardinals coming in this one 3-1. And, and the Irish hosting Sarkoxy. Lafayette looking for their first win. Other games on football tonight as well. Archie at LeBlanc. Nate Man football, St. Joe Christian up at North Thander. Well, maybe Cannon, Bezos Lathrop trying to go to 5-0. And, and highlights from all six of these games will be on football tonight, beginning just a little bit about 10 minutes from now at 10.35. We'll have scores from the MEC, KCI, GRC, and 11-man and 8-man football and the 275 conference scores, plus Kansas scores and interviews too. Football tonight beginning in about 10 minutes here at 10.35 with all of the highlight scores and interviews you need. That's a good sports. We'll be right back.
The United States and G7 leaders are labeling referendums in Kremlin-controlled parts of Ukraine as a, quote, sham. Right now, unlawful voting in those referendums is underway on whether or not Russian-occupied parts of Ukraine will illegitimately become a part of Russia. And NATO is warning Russian President Vladimir Putin could use the rushed referendums to escalate his war. Melissa Rainey has the latest. War crimes allegedly committed by Russian forces in Ukraine have been detailed nearly since the beginning of its invasion. Now evidence shows crimes of brutal executions and sexual violence have been committed, according to United Nations investigators who report the commission has documented cases in which children have been raped, tortured and unlawfully confined. Children have also been killed and injured in indiscriminate attacks with explosive weapons. We now see an example of the horrifying consequences of falling into the grasp of Russian forces. Photos of this Ukrainian soldier revealing what he looks like after being released from Russian captivity. My guess is we're going to see a long term war of lower military intensity. Neither side can sustain a, a high tempo military war given the human and material costs uh, of that. As war wages on and illegitimate referendums begin in Russian-occupied parts of Ukraine, NATO warns the Kremlin could use its, quote, sham referendum to escalate its war. They will be manipulated and they will not be fair and, uh, and, uh, and free. They serve one purpose, and that is to uh, uh, give uh, President Putin, Russia, uh, some excuses for even more violence, even more uh, use of weapons. If, if they go forward with the annexation, uh, we will never recognize that. That's not just coming from us. Uh, that is also coming from G7 leaders. I'm Melissa Rainey reporting. And we'll be right back with a final look at your weekend forecast. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Yeah, mic check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hello, mic check, one, two, three, four, five. I'm just...
Well, as we go through tonight, um, looks like uh, we'll be seeing some patchy fog out there, so be careful, especially in tomorrow morning. 52, your overnight low tomorrow. We'll be at 82 with that morning fog and northwest wind in the afternoon. Then after that, temperatures stay in the 70s. Overnight lows will be in the 40s. Notice how we head towards Thursday and Friday, mid 70s. Well, thanks for watching, but don't go anywhere because football tonight starts next right here on KQ2. Coming up on football tonight, Central welcoming in North Kansas City tonight in a battle of two 3-1 teams. Plus, while an MEC showdown on the south side features an undefeated Savannah and a 3-1 Benton Cardinals team. And in eight-man football, it's a top five showdown between Platte Valley and Albany. Highlights and more coming up on Football Tonight. Five football tonight is finally here. Thanks for joining. I'm Mitch Riberall, joined by the one and only Chris Roush. Chris, another Friday night of football and another day you and I are both here. That was the nicest intro you've ever given me. But yes, Mitchell. Don't get used to it. I won't. <laughs> Week five already in the books. Hard to believe we're over the halfway point of the regular season. Some teams starting to separate themselves from the rest of the pack, whether it's conference play, district seating starting to come into the mix now. You're trying to you know, jockey for that better position there. But we need to start here in town, Class 5, Central High School we go. Two 3-1 teams, North KC in town taking on Central. Not the first half, Central won in this one. They go to the half down 39-14, to trying to get something going right before the end of the half. But they turn over on downs on this drive, go into the break, down by 25. Second half, still well offering crew, trying to turn things around. North Kansas City gets the ball first, but Central's defense stands strong. Central gets the ball now. Wetlaufer out of the gun to Gabe Fields with a screen. Gains about seven on the play or so, but this drive stalls and gets backed up with some penalties. On the punt attempt, Central deep in their own territory. They had a few issues early, and this one gets blocked. It's a five for the loose ball. North KC touches it, never gets possession of it. Central recovers, but it does end up North Kansas City's ball. Ensuing drive. Central's defense standing strong, but North Kansas City does score twice in the second half, picks up a 53-14 win over Central. Now we head to the north side, Lafayette taking on the Bears from Sarcoxy. Second quarter, Irish down 6-0, the Bears with the rush, Lafayette forcing the fumble there, good defense, but the Bears recover it, and to end the half now, final play of the first half, Irish trying to get on the board, Compton drops back, Rolls right, fires it downfield to Malik Reed, who makes the snag, but doesn't keep his feet in bounds. No score, 6-0 at half. Now second half now on the one. Compton QB keeper, and he gets in. Took him a couple tries there, but he finally gets in. Irish first score, but this one not going Lafayette's way. Sarkoxy takes this one, 18-7. Lafayette still looking for their first win of the season. From the north side down to the south side, Savannah 4-0 visiting the 3-1 Benton Cardinals. First drive, third and about 23 after some penalties for the Cardinals. They do pull off a big play here on the pitch and catch. It's about a 22-yard gain, so it brings up a fourth and one. Savannah stops him, takes over. Savage's first drive of the game in the red zone. Ethan Dudek out of the gun, fakes the handoff, play action, rolls was right. Finds Zayden snap in the back of the end zone. Touchdown, Savannah. It's 7-0 Savages. Benton does score in the first quarter on a rich to Doman connection. And Doman, he's a hard guy to bring down. A couple other big-time receptions here for him in the first half. Breaks tackles, keeps his feet moving. 
Doman, he's a big playmaker for the Benton Cardinals a little bit later on too. This time, fakes the handoff. Now Doman, the out route, trying to get something going. That one doesn't result in a score either on that drive. Then Savannah gets it back early second quarter. Nolan Smith on the quick run, gets down inside the 10 yard line. Then it's Kate Chappelle, big week last week against Lafayette. He bulldozes his way into the end zone. Savannah moves to 5-0 on the year with a 54-22 victory. And it was a packed house at Cameron High School as the Maryville Spoof Hounds taking on the Cameron Dragons. From the opening kickoff, it was all Spoof Hounds in this one. A quick three and out by the Dragons would set up the Hounds in great field position in the first drive. However, the Dragons, a big interception right there by the freshman River Meadows to give them the ball back early in the first quarter. And on following drive, Dragons fumble the ball setting. Maryville up easy for a touchdown run right here, putting Maryville up 7-0 after just five minutes. A lot of action and the turnovers just killing the Dragons as on the following drive. Dragons fumble again. The read option which set up Maryville inside the 30. Another touchdown from Derek Quinley and the Spoof Hounds jump out to 14-0 and Maryville goes on to win 49-0. And other MEC scores, Chillicothe with a big win against St. Pius today, 29-20, a big win for the Hornets. Don't go anywhere because when we return here on week five of football tonight, Missouri High School football, including the East Buchanan Bulldogs looking for their fourth win of the season. And the Mid Buchanan Dragons looking to keep their undefeated season alive. Stay tuned, more football coming up next. Welcome back to Football Tonight, Week 5, and you're still here. I know I said it earlier, but I don't know I, why you're surprised. You know, you were hurt a couple weeks, hurt, a lot of people say, you know, with your leg. I, this is I don't know, it's, it's just nice having you here, Chris. Uh-huh, I'm sure it is for yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. We almost replaced you with a plant last year and last week. Anyway, yeah, right. well, let's continue okay. on. KCI Football, Mid Buchanan down in Lathrop. Defense heavy in this ball game to begin the game. Couple of punts early in this one. First drive for the Mules of the quarter. Trying to get something going against the Dragons in this one. Mid Buchanan has a really stingy defense. That's kind of been their MO for the last several years. Lathrop trying to get something going here. First drive for the Mules. As we were having some technical difficulties with this and we'll come back to it maybe later on in the broadcast. The Dragons do pull off a victory tonight. They moved to 5-0 on the season. They defeat Lathrop and move to 5-0 on the year. Other scores, Lawson 
taking on West Platte. They get a 29-6 win. Lawson goes to 3-2 on the year. And we go over to Hamilton. Hamilton Hornets hosting the East Buchanan Bulldogs. Hornets hoping to get in the win column as the Bulldogs are battling for their third straight win. Second quarter we go, just over two minutes left. Bulldogs already up 28-0, and running back Trevor Klein takes the snap, makes a quick toss to Aiden Hensley, who avoids one tackle, breaks free before finally being brought down right in front of the camera. I love that shot. Later in the same drive, Klein again, this time gets the ball, tries to run around, but Hamilton right there, good defense, and that would force the Bulldogs to kick a field goal, extend their lead to 31-0. Now, Hamilton trying to get something going before halftime. A good run there. McBee hands it off to Tate UC. Runs across the field for a big gain. And with just seconds left, McBee steps back, throws to his left, but it is picked off by Hensley, who he's got blockers and some room to run. He easily runs that back for a pick six in the Bulldogs. Proved the 4 1 on the season, winning 45 16. Over in Plattsburgh tonight, Tigers taking on North Platte. Pick up half number two. Plattsburgh looking all right running the football. Things looking upward coming out of the half with the drive stalls. North Platte gets the ball, gets some tough running of their own. Cabin up the driver, the QB sneak in just a little bit. They go up 45 to six. North Platte getting their third win of the season. They win 45 to six over Plattsburgh. Helton Grand River Conference scores nine to two. Milan beats Trenton 21 to seven, and Putnam County going to four and one. They defeat Princeton 40 to 16. Out in Gallatin, it's a battle between the Bulldogs and the Wolverines. Gallatin coming in tonight looking for their fifth straight win, while Maysville looking for their third win in a row. Early in the first quarter, Maysville is up 6-0. Quarterback Chris Gabbard takes the snap, tried to run, but is hit hard and taken down. And later in the second quarter, Gallatin has the ball near the end zone. Quarterback Peyton Rainey snaps the ball, tries to run himself, but defense swarms and sacked for the loss. Now just before the half, Rainey hands the ball off to Draven Wright. Runs to the far side of the field, avoiding all the defenders, and is brought down in the end zone to tie the game up. But Gallatin goes on to win this one, 35-12 for their sixth straight win. And another GRC matchup today, South Harrison wins 16-8 against Polo. Halfway done with the show, we still have a lot of football coming up, including Mitchell's favorite, eight-man football. Ooh. We're going back, including North Ander, for are trying to start their season 5-0. Highlights coming up. And the Bishop LeBlanc Golden Eagles hosting a top three team in eight-man football. Can the Golden Eagles come out on top? Stay tuned. Highlights coming up next.
Welcome back to football tonight. Chris Roush, Mitchell Riberall. Now we go to eight-man football, and we're starting to see some teams kind of separate themselves from the rest of the pack at this point in the season. You have teams like North Andrew, you have Albany, Platte Valley, Archie. And speaking of Archie. Yeah, speaking of Archie, they were here in town going up against Bishop LeBlanc, who's trying to get back into yep. that conversation. So we might as well just start over at LeBlanc. Bishop LeBlanc hosting Archie Whirlwind. Earlier in the first, Eagles marching down the field. Landon Gardner and Shagun fakes the handoff, but gets laid out in the backfield. A couple plays later, though, Gardner and Shagun rolls out to his right, pump fakes, keeps it, lowers his shoulder, and lays down a hit of his own and gets in the end zone. Two-point conversion, good. Eagles lead 8-0. Archie moving downfield. Briar McIntyre and Shagun with snap. Bulls off the outside. Bust chase down before he can break free. Now later in the first, Eagles with the ball back. Gardner again rolls out to his left. Looks downfield. Heaves it. Jake Carell makes a leaping grab. That's a nice duo right there. LeBlanc still in possession. Gardner once again and Shagun takes a snap. This time he keeps it and he runs in untouched into the end zone. Eagles lead 14-0 at the end of the first. But Archie comes back big in this one and wins 56 to 28. Other eight-man area scores, Mound City falls at home 46 to 12 to Nottaway Valley. Up in Rosendale, North Andrew hosting St. Joe Christian tonight. First drive of this one, the Cardinals. Braxton Linville drops back, finds Dawson Eichner completely wide open. That is a North Andrew Cardinal touchdown on the first play of the drive. Now Lions turn. Drop back, pass, almost picked off by Matthew Evans. Ooh, that was close. And then, same drive. Jacob Claybaugh in the gun, finds Logan Hubble for the catch. The Lions get something going here, too. Touchdown, SJC, but North Andrew only needing one play drives to get things going for them. This time, hand off to Andrew Goff. See, that's three times fast. He breaks tackles and is off to the races as he scores. North Andrew wins big in this one, 86 to 30. Other score tonight, Grand River Conference games. King City falling to Worth County 42-8. And then Stanbury getting a big win tonight, 84-48. Lots of scoring in that one in eight-man football. Don't go anywhere because we still have a lot more to get to, including week four over in Kansas with Riverside looking for a win at home. Highlights coming up from there. And a top 10 showdown in Albany tonight. Highlights from this showdown coming up next with much more. Yeah, check, 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 one, two, one, two. Number two, Platte Valley. Number four, Albany. Aiden Blackford and company trying to get things going against the Warriors early. He rolls to his right, finds Jackson McCrary 
the fullback for the score. Platte Valley early up in this one. Albany answers Kemper Klein. Option to Troy Popplewell. Touchdown Albany. This game a back and forth absolute battle tonight. Coming out of the final play in this one, Albany. The Warriors getting a stop. Winning their second game in a row by two points. The Warriors win 36-34. Albany moves to 5-0 on the season. Other 275 games tonight, South Holt beats the Cavs 64-30, and then Rockport and East Action, they won't kick off until tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock. We'll have highlights from that game tomorrow night on Kicking 2 News at 10. And other scores, Stewartsville Osborne hosting Southwest Livingston. Wildcards getting the 64-6 win tonight. And now we are joined by eight-man expert, Devin Alberson. Devin, it feels, it's great to have you. Yeah, it's back in the studio. It's kind of nice to see you guys here in person. So It feels weird, though, a little bit. A little bit. I, I, I like it here, though. <laughs> you so. should Absolutely. go sit in the car at a gas station. <laughs> maybe. Maybe we'll try fun. that. So, Devin, you were at LeBlanc yes. today. There, there's a lot of tough matchups that we obviously have mm -hmm. to get to, but since you were there at that one, could you just talk about what you saw that? Well, early on, LeBlanc jumped out to a 22-8 lead. Landon Gardner had a couple rushing touchdowns and a big passing touchdown. Um, he was just playing Superman in that first quarter kind of deal and playing really well. Carell was doing a great job as well for him. So LeBlanc came out early, but the Archies, their D-line just wore down LeBlanc over three and a half quarters there. And Briar McIntyre is a really good player for Archie. I had him for almost 300 yards rushing tonight there for Archie. So he's a very good player. Archie's a very good team. They're up in that same echelon with North Andrew and North County and Albany and all those teams up here. They're a very good football team. And LeBlanc just kind of ran into a really good team tonight. And I think for a lot of people in eight-man football, up in this area, we don't see Archie a lot, mm -hmm. right? We don't see the teams like Archie and Drex and all of them. We don't see them very often. What does this kind of show the northern teams about a team like Archie? Because LeBlanc jumped out, like you said, early mm -hmm. on them, put up 28 points against a really good team, but the McIntyre kid, really good athlete too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was 48-6 to six after that 22-6 to six lead there, 22-8 to eight lead there for LeBlanc. So very impressive. And I think just the line play for Archie might show out the most. It's been the biggest difference between the north and the south the last couple of years, the line play. But Brock Smith and company for Archie, they showed out and played really well. I don't know if Archie had positive rushing yards tonight because that defense was so good for Archie on that. So I was really impressed with the Archie defense. LeBlanc, they battled through. They had a couple of nice passing plays. They just couldn't keep consistently asking Landon Gardner to keep making superhero plays. It's just tough to do over four quarters. And you know, we've seen, like Chris said, Albany the last two weeks have been <laughs> very tough games. Platte Valley, you all, we obviously know they're a top ranked team and a top team, but that one coming down to the wire and I mean, <clears throat> Albany, Two weeks in a row now, close wins. Platte Valley trying to stay up there. What, what do you think about those two? Yeah, Albany, I mean, they just keep doing what they do. They just grind out wins there for them. And I do feel bad for Platte Valley. Carter Luke did go out in the first half with an injury, the ankle injury. I hope he's okay going forward for him. But Platte Valley still built a two-score lead in that second half without him. And then Albany just called their way back in. I know Platte Valley got the ball down near the goal line with like 20 seconds left and got stopped at the four-yard line. So Platte Valley was... Uh, just a hair away from winning this game and getting a big road win against Albany. So Albany's in good shape right now. They got two huge District 4 wins over Worth County and Platte Valley the last two weeks. They still got to play North Andrew and King City later this year. Um, but I'm really excited to see what Albany does the rest of the year because they're a really good football team. And Platte Valley, they're no slouches either. You saw here tonight. They're a really complete team besides just Carter Luke there up front for them. Let's keep it with the Albany thing here because you know the last couple of years Albany's been the team that's ran into the Worth Counties, the yep. Stanberries, North Banders. I, mean, I think we talked about it quite a bit. Yeah. But this team deserves kind of the praise and attention they're getting at this point. They're five and zero. Oh, they've been a team that's been so close the last couple of years. Is this the year where you see a guy like Kemper Klein, one of the best quarterbacks in the mm -hmm. state, just kind of? I mean, we're seeing them take that next step. But is this the year where Albany's putting everybody on notice? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Like two years ago, they had three or four losses that year by less than a touchdown. They're winning those games this year. I think a lot of that's just maturity. A lot of those guys were sophomores then, still learning how to win versus tough games versus top teams in eight-man football. So I'm impressed to see what um, all he does the rest of the year. And Coach Fountain out there is one of the better coaches in eight-man football. I know his record is still below 500 for his career, but the way he coaches does not reflect his record there. He's a very good coach. Even when they had down talent, everyone's like, Albany is so tough to play. So now that he has a lot of really good talent, Kim Klein and maturing and all the guys there, they're a really dangerous team because of how well coached they are as well. Yeah, we just have under a minute with you, Devin, and you know, we, Chuck Davis may have told you to <laughs> have us bring it down. It, does the plant look healthy to you? Is it thriving? I so, hope so it looks good to me. I'm not. I don't have a green thumb. A green thumb, but it looks like you're doing a good job with it, Mitchell. Um, yeah, I told Chuck I was gonna be in the studio, so he's like, the plant better be there. So okay. had to make sure <laughs> that there. the plant was here for Chuck for you. So it looks good, Chuck. Um, it looks like it's thriving here, at KQ2. I think we just call it the eight-man plant. Doesn't make any sense at all, but it's, that's when we. It works. Yeah, we'll, we'll take we'll, it. We'll rock with it. All right, Devin. Thanks for coming on in studio next week. Yeah. We'll see where you're at.
We'll put Mitchell in a car, though. <laughs> you can just sit in the parking lot and do this. That'd be fun. No worries. Thanks, right. Devin. Yeah, thanks, guys. Some more highlights now. Riverside taking on Jackson Heights. Early in this one, the motion man goes in motion, gets the handoff, and a few blocks ahead of him. That's a pretty decent run right there for Riverside. Now second quarter we go, and it's Riverside's ball. Cyclones drop back, and they go for gold. Beckham Griffins finds Ryder Davis. Oh my goodness, what a throw, what a catch. Open space, that's 65-yard touchdown for Riverside. Jackson Heights trying to get anything going.